My field of study is neuroscience. Um, I study uh, sea lampreys, and I try to unite the study of uh, physiology, neuroscience, and bioinformatics to understand how sea lampreys evolved. So my undergraduate training was in neuroscience. That was my, undergrad, my uh, second undergraduate degree. My first degree was actually in psychology. Um, and I did a master's degree working with sea lamprey um, at the University of Windsor, just across the river. Um, and my master's supervisor knows my PhD supervisor, and so I decided to do a PhD at Michigan State University, and it's my professor sits in the F Department of Fisheries and Wildlife, so that's why my PhD is in Fisheries and Wildlife. There's so much unknown, and like I said, one of the most important qualities of a scientist is being curious and being inquisitive. And I mean, if you're not if you're not curious, you're not inquisitive. That science is not the career for you. But um, just knowing that there are questions to be answered and that you can do it, you know, you can you can design the experiments, you can do the work to answer that question is really satisfying. And the, the, the collaborative aspect, actually working with other scientists from your discipline, but also from um, related disciplines is really cool too, to see how um, different techniques and approaches can be applied to what you do to answer the question that you have, which I think is just the best thing ever. So sea lampreys are a jealous vertebrate. Um, and they are uh, the oldest living representative of what vertebrates looked like before they became, before there was the radiation of uh, vertebrates, of all the different types of vertebrates, from fish to birds to reptiles to mammals and humans. And they're still living today, so looking at them gives us a clue as to what vertebrates looked like <clears throat> 570 million years ago. As well, um, they're invasive to the Great Lakes, so there's an ecological and economic impact to them. Um, they've, they've really devastated the fisheries in the Great Lakes ecosystem. And uh, so we, we want to study them so that we have ways to control their populations. Um, <clears throat> as well, they are a really good model for studying vertebrates. So, you know, in biology, especially for, for biomedical human stuff, you, know, you can't always do research on humans. It's not possible, it's not feasible, it's not ethical. And so using um, a sea lamprey as a model for vertebrate studies is uh, simpler, um, much uh, yeah, simpler model to, to use, um, a lot easier to obtain. And so that's, that's the value of studying lampreys. And, and, and it is not an eel because eels have jaws. So they are not an eel. They are actually classified as agnathan animals. Yes. Great question. Um, the sea lamprey is native to the Atlantic Ocean and the, 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 sea, the eastern seaboard of the United States. And they are, um, the two ways to describe the lampreys are they're anadromous, which means that they spend some of their time in, great, in fresh water and some of their time in salt water. Sea lamprey specifically are born and uh, mate in freshwater streams, and they spend their adult life um, uh, in open waters. So, the the way that they invaded the Great Lakes was if you if you look at the um, geography of the Great Lakes, is coming from the Saint Lawrence Seaway into Lake Ontario. It's completely open, so we think that sea lamprey were probably always in that area, but. Coming in from Lake Ontario to Lake Erie, there's a huge natural barrier of Niagara Falls. So in 1824, um, the, the Welland Canal was opened as a means of shipping goods through the Great Lakes um, to, you know, through Lake Erie and then Lake Huron, uh, Michigan, and Superior. So opening up that um, canal also allowed anything that was in Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence Seaway to now spread into the Laurentian Great Lakes. So we think that's actually how they started invading into the Great Lakes. So they still exhibit um, the behavior of uh, mating and uh, being born in freshwater streams, but instead of going out to the open oceans, now the, the parasitic phase of the sea lamprey goes out to the open lakes instead of the open oceans. So they've lost that um, going out to the, the oceans phase, but they still go out to open waters to feed, which is why they're such a problem. So the, the, the fresh, 
when they go up to the uh, to the open waters of the lakes, what they do is they jawless fish, and they uh, create a suction onto the sides of fish, and they use a specialized rasping tongue to um, rub or rasp a hole into the side of uh, fish, large fish, and they feed on the blood and other tissues of other fish. And the, the problem is that it kills the fish, but also if you're a fisherman, commercial or sport, and you pull up a fish with a sea lamprey wound on it, it's not very appetizing, you don't want to eat it. So it impacts not only the commercial fisheries, but also the sport fishing industry and fishing licenses. So, full disclosure, I was not the best student in university. Um, I did much better my psychology classes than biology. You know, biology, biochemistry, chemistry, they're difficult courses, and they're meant to be. Um, so I found that I had to put a lot more time because you know putting in the same effort that I was doing in high school and my other courses wasn't cutting it for my biology, organic chemistry, especially courses. And so I really had to spend more time with, with the material because there was just no other way around it. I wasn't grasping it, and the only way around it was to spend more time with the textbook and ask more questions, meet, see, see the professor or the TA, and really work at it. I mean, that's the only way to get around that, that particular problem. I think most people have a vague um, idea of what scientists do, but people don't really know. One of the things, though, that um, I pursue as an instructor, no matter what course I'm teaching, but especially with science majors, uh, non-science majors, is to uh, raise scientific literacy. Um, I think it's important to teach students to um, think critically and to challenge things that they see in the media because there's a lot of junk science out there in the media. So to really um, have a basic understanding of biological concepts, of theories, of, of, the, of the scientific method so that when they see stuff <laughs> on CNN, on Fox News, uh, in, in the New York Times, that they can um, intelligently evaluate that information and, and actually ask, the, ask the, the question, is what they're telling me information or is this just junk?